Well, hello, friends. Welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we are going to uh, tweak the Brown Princeton, uh, or I, I guess I, I should correct myself and say I'm going to tell you how I had fun tweaking the Brown Chris Stapleton 62 edition uh, Fender Princeton amp. These are really fun amps, and I, I couldn't leave it alone because yeah, it's, it's a sickness. And uh, so I had to mess around with the amp some, and so I'm just going to tell you what I did and... Uh, yeah, and tell you what my thoughts were with uh, changing out some tubes and speakers and stuff like that. So, yeah, so while you're thinking about it, uh, you can go down to the corner and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Remember, if you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up because that helps the, the algorithm. Uh, also, I really appreciate people supporting the show, and there's multiple ways. You can go to askzach.com and you can find merch. There's uh, tip jar information in the description or you can find out, find out about Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support the channel on a monthly basis. All right, so let's dive in. So, of course, last week's episode was on the, uh, the mighty Chris Stapleton uh, edition 62 Princeton amp from Fender. Now, of course, I couldn't leave well enough alone because it's just, it's a simple amp, you know, because it only has you know, five tubes in it and a single, you know, 12 inch speaker. And immediately, you know, I started tweaking on it. And yes, I'll admit it right here that I should have like documented every step of the way, but I didn't, I didn't. I just, uh, you know, I, I was just kind of experimenting with it. And then kind of after the fact, I thought, oh, it would have been really cool if I would have done all these before and after videos. But sorry, I wasn't up for all of that. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you what I did and and what what I found and what I think's the most helpful if you're wanting to change the amp at all. So I think the amp is great as is. I think the amp, as it comes from the factory, is very stout and big shouldered and and loud. It just depends on if you want to soften it and kind of take it a little bit more toward. Uh, I don't, you know, the thing is, it still sounds like a Brown Princeton. It's just that it's a more stout, robust version of a Brown Princeton. If I guess if you want to degrade it down to a less stout version, which is kind of, you know, what I did in a way. So let's let's just walk through that. So first, I'm going to talk about tubes. So I looked at the tubes in it and and was kind of surprised because it had a. Uh, Instead of a 5Y3 rectifier, it had a 5AR4. Now, what that does, when you put a 5AR4 into an amp that normally takes a 5Y3, what you're doing is you're hitting all of the tubes with more voltage than they would normally get. So, I saw also that when I looked at the power tubes, it was not your normal 6V6. It was the Groove Tube 6V6S. And you might be saying, well, what, what does that mean? Well, S stands for Slovakia, which means that basically this is a JJ6V6, which the JJ6V6 is more robust and capable of taking higher voltages than a regular 6V6. So I think they did that on purpose. They put in a 5AR4, and then they put in these JJ, uh, you know, rebranded by Groove Tubes as uh, 6V6S tubes in there. And what that does makes the amp louder, makes it makes it a little bigger sounding. And uh, yeah, and just a brief aside on Groove Tubes. Um, Groove Tubes was never a factory as far as tubes. Um, tube manufacturing left the US probably in the 70s or maybe early 80s. Uh, Groove Tubes never had a factory as far as tubes were concerned. They were always a rebrander of tubes. So they would get new old stock US tubes and they'd get tubes from uh, other countries and then they would rebrand re them as groove tubes. And then always the last letter on the tube would tell you the country of origin. So if the last letter is an S, it's Slovakia, which means it's from the JJ factory. If it's R, it's Russian. And if it's C, it's uh, Chinese. And then 
the other one that you're going to see is uh, if you have some really old groove tubes, you'll see stuff with an A on it, which meant it was made in America. So, uh, and that would have to be pretty, pretty old. So I have some old groove tube labeled 5751s that say 5751-A on them. All right. So looking at that, I decided, well, let's put a real 5Y3. Now that's another problem is there aren't many manufacturers that make a 5Y3 that's actually low voltage like it's supposed to be. The only one that does that is, um, is JJ, or you can get an old 5Y3. And so I had an old 5Y3 lying around, so I put that in there. And it changed the sound, it kind of softened things up a little bit. But then I decided, well, let's go ahead and change the output tube. So I got some, you know, just brand new tongue saw uh, 6V6s, and that, you know, brought the, the bass level down a little bit, brought the, you know, the loudness down a little bit. Uh, I messed around with putting a 5751 in it and that kind of pulled the mid-range back some and it made it a little sweeter, but I didn't like that. So I put a regular 12x7 back in. Okay, so that was kind of the, the, the tube thing I did, um, which again was just an experiment. It was just kind of having fun. So what, the way you're hearing the amp right now, it has an old um, RCA 5Y3 in there, which rectifiers don't change the tone of anything per se. They just either work or they don't work. Um, you know, of course you do have different specs that will put out different voltages and that can affect tone. So, but I think it'd be fine with a JJ 5Y3 in there. And then I've got the tongue saw, uh, six V sixes in there. And, uh, I, I like it. I, it, is it an improvement? I don't know. I mean, it just kind of, it just kind of brings it down a little bit. It kind of tames it a little bit. It, it just depends on where you want to take the amp. So here's where you start getting where... Yeah, you, you start uh, really changing the sound of the amp more so than changing tubes is changing speakers, okay? Now the speaker, the stock speaker in it was an 11 pound eminence and very efficient, you know, rating of a SPL over 100, I think it was 101. So as soon as I started experimenting with speakers, of course, most of them uh, made the amp uh, not as loud. Uh, also, that speaker, the stock speaker is very robust, very uh, mid and bass forward. So, uh, yeah. So, here are some, some of the speakers that I, that I tried. Was I put an Alnico Blue Celestian speaker in it, and I thought that speaker in it sounded fantastic, except it kind of took away some of the charm of the amp to begin with. And... Yeah, it just it just felt like it started becoming a different amp altogether. And so as much as I liked the speaker, pulled that out. Next one I tried was the uh, WGS-12CS, and I have it here. Oh. So this is part of their, uh, their American lineup, but it has kind of some, well, I guess some older features on it. So here you can see it's a smooth cone. It uh, doesn't have the uh, ridges in it, and the ridges uh, help the speaker kind of hold together longer, help it, uh, you know, stay cleaner longer as far as the speaker itself. I'm not talking about the, the tubes. Uh, and then it has kind of a felt-looking uh, dome on it, which that kind of smooths out the highs. You can see it's got a big magnet. It's uh, 75 watts. Uh, yeah, this speaker sounded really good, except... It just didn't have a whole lot of life to it in, in this amp. And so it didn't really feel like an improvement to me or even something really different over the stock speaker. So then I started, so then I, I stuck a, uh, another warehouse speaker and this was at the recommendation of a friend of mine. And this is a very different speaker. It's called the G12Q. And you can see this has a tiny little baby magnet on here and it has a tiny little dust cover and voice coil and it has the uh, the ridges on here and so this is a 20 watt speaker and when i put this in the amp all of a sudden it really sounded like an old amp kind of warts and all 
So now, of course, it didn't sound exactly like an old one because an old one would have a tin. So it still sounded bigger, but it sounded very fendery, very papery. It had that kind of high-end thing going on that was missing in the other speakers. However, um, unless you crank the amp up, the high strings on the Telecaster, especially on the bridge pickup, sounded kind of banjo-y. <laughs> and some people would say it does that anyway. But uh, it was a little too banjo-y. But when you turn this thing up, it sounded really, really nice. Because again, you know, you've got like a 12-watt you know, amp with a 20-watt speaker with a little magnet, little voice coil, little dust cover and everything. So this is a cool speaker, but I just didn't end up loving it. So then I... Uh, Thought, well, let, let's find something a little a little bigger than that, a little more than 20 watt. So this is the original speaker that was in my Deluxe Reverb. So this is a 1965 Fender labeled Utah speaker. So Fender used Oxford, Utah, and Jensen speakers in the mid 60s. And uh, they were all supposed to be the same speaker, but it was just three different manufacturers. So they were supposed to be interchangeable, but of course they sounded different. And this one was originally blown, so Vin, uh, uh, Vintone uh, reconed it, and uh, it's it's really nice. And it was kind of an improvement in some ways over the G12Q, but it it still kind of lacked some some beef. So again, this is a good speaker and good in its own application, but it wasn't really right. Okay, so then I put in a. Uh, you know, one of those 90 watt cream Alnico uh, Celestians that I have that was one that I experimented with years ago and I put it in there. And again, it, it kind of hid the amp. All of a sudden it started sounding like some kind of odd boutique amp. And so I was kind of, I know there's so many speakers out there, but I was kind of done experimenting with speakers. I was just kind of worn out with it. And one of the guys at, uh, at True Tone, Bill Keck, who's, uh, who helped me in doing some of this stuff because he's, he's an amp guy. He's built amps and, and such. And so he's a, a really good guy and, uh, and a friend. He said, you know what? I have this old Eminence uh, GB128, which is kind of like their version of a, it's kind of like their take on a greenback speaker. He said, you ought to try that. So... I got the speaker out and the first thing I noticed was how huge the dust cover and the voice coil was. It had this huge, you know, much bigger than the ones on the other ones. And, uh, and I just thought, you know, I don't like greenback speakers in general, but I stuck that thing in the amp and that's what's in it today. And I just really liked it. So is it, you know, an improvement, you know, over anything? I don't know, but it was just, it was fun to put in there. And, uh, and, and hear kind of what, what it does. I think it's a good complement to the amp. So at the end of the day, you know, I have the original preamp tubes still in the amp. There's just two 12X7s. Then I have two Tung Sol, you know, brand new Tung Sol 6V6s in there. And then I have an old 5Y3, an old RCA in there, which again, uh, a JJ would be fine. But other manufacturers, the 5Y3 will be higher voltage. And then I put in the Eminence GB128 in there, which is like a you know, $80 to $100 you know, speaker. So yeah, I thought you know, it was really, really fun. And uh, let's find, we have to find a pick. Uh, here's, here's kind of the neck pickup. both. Up on the uh, on the intro where I was doing you know the and if 
can turn it up, you know. Doesn't sound too bad. Sounds pretty good. So, yeah, so that was kind of my experiment with the amp and uh, in tweaking it just to kind of to see what what you know what different sounds you could get out of the amp. At the end of the day, I think the amp sounds great with the stock tubes and speakers. It's just these are some possible mods that you could do to the amp if you want to take it maybe in a little less robust sound direction if you want to make it a little less loud. Um, Otherwise, leave the amp as is. I think it's great as is. In fact, I would love to, uh, you know, play through it, uh, you know, live as is. Again, this was just part of the sickness of it all, of, of uh, you know, hearing every, everything that, a, you know, something can do, especially a simple amp like this where, you know, tube and speaker changes make such a, a huge difference. So... All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and a little look at tweaking the Brown Princeton. And uh, yeah, and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.